we are live. Hello everybody, welcome. My name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist. And this is the inspiration painting today that we'll be dealing with. Um, I've made a few changes. We've kind of just brightened it up with more flowers and I've taken away the cotton. I'm gonna show you the traceable now. And here we go. So this is the new traceable. This is for a painting kit that we'll have on our website at tipsyartist.com. I've added some butterflies. I've added a place for you to place a monogram at and then also a really cute courtly check pattern too. So it's gonna be really fun. And today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. Uh, we'll actually start with the traceable process in the beginning. I normally do all that in advance. Uh, so be kind of chill, <laughs> relaxing. <laughs> Maybe it'll be like ASMR for you, so who knows? There's a lot of movement of the uh, transfer paper, which is kind of nice ASMR. But yes, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and do that first here in just a little bit. But just want to give you a little bit of an introduction on this. And uh, again, let's show the bright, colorful version while I continue to talk about this. So again, we do have this as a painting kit online. We also have this as an in-person studio class. Uh, coming up this Saturday, March 5th, Saturday night, 6 p.m. And you can register, again, at tipsyartist.com as well. So we look forward to seeing you. If you can get out, we'd love to have you here. Um, or if you can't, then just paint with us at home. So we'll keep this class up um, just forever, forever and ever it'll be there for you. So you can always have fun with that. All right. So we are about to switch gears here and move everything to where we can see it a lot better. So here we go. All right. Let's move this over. Actually, let me go back. All right, so let's see. Whoops, wrong direction. And welcome again, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here today. We're so happy to have you with us. If you have any questions or fun comments, awesome comments, or welcome, <laughs> encouragement, love, hugs online, um, please leave that below. And I always get back with everybody right after the class. Okay, so I'm going to start out with a pencil to begin with. You can also use a red pen if you have one of those at home that shows a little bit of contrast. But a pencil does come with our kit, so it makes it really easy. I'm um, also going to grab a ruler, but please know that your paint kit, which uh, comes with this, this works as a beautiful ruler too, so it's a perfect little straight edge. You can need it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start with these straight lines first. We're going to knock these out. Whoops. A bit of a shift there. That'll be alright. We'll fix that later. Okay, and the cool thing about a pencil too is that you can see the shimmer of the graphite so you know where you've been, which is awesome. And then as soon as I get done doing this move here, I'm gonna back up a little bit because I realized I didn't give a whole lot of explanation, if any at all, on how to set up all this. So I got ahead of myself. So my apologies on that. A ruler really helps with all these straight lines. All right, now let me back up a little bit and talk about this. So this comes with the kit. This is your graphite paper. This is your line art. You want to make sure that I just place the graphite paper down first. I just keep it right in the center. If you're working with an 8x10 canvas, then of course you'll have a little bit of overflow. It'll actually cover all of it, so you won't even have to worry about centering really. And then I only tape up here at the top. That's really important. And so, again, only there at the top, that way you can constantly lift up and check your work. Because once you completely remove this, you're, it's very, very, <laughs> I'm not going to say impossible, but almost, to line it up exactly to where it was. So, again, you just want to make sure you get all those details in place before you actually remove this. 
and then this easily being able to lift up during the process really helps you go back and always double check your work. Okay, I'm going to move a few things out of the way so I can just be a little bit more free and you can always just turn as you work. Gives you better positioning. And I do have that little tape on there, but it doesn't interfere at all with the transfer process hitting the canvas. And then we'll go to our vertical stripes here. to tag that middle line. Do not want to forget that. Let's get that middle line. So I will turn this back around. We'll do a little double check here. We've got our courtly check. Good marks in place. That is wonderful. I'm not digging this pencil. This pencil is kind of dull. Hold on a second. That's better. All right, so now we'll start to get to work on more of these free form objects. Sweet little butterfly here. And so you just trace right over the top. Wherever you see a line, you just place a line right on top of that. Just like that. It's a little busy in here. This is definitely where you're going to have to make sure and do a lot of double checking because you can really lose track of where you've been. But things that help are to kind of maybe turn it, look at it from an angle to see the shimmer of the graphite. You kind of see that up close. That's really helpful. And then, of course, just lifting the paper to see what you've been able to do.
It's looking good. Take a look. I think we're looking like we're in really good shape here. I've got all the major elements. I'm going to take a few quick peeks back and forth just to make sure. So this is that graphite transfer process. It's a wonderful cheat, and many professional artists use it all the time. So it's great for portraiture and things like that too. It's really wonderful. All right, so I feel like we are good. And I'm going to take it off. Just to lift that off the background. And as long as you turn your graphite paper a different direction, you can usually reuse it too. You just can't use it in the exact same spot but you can get multiple uses out of it if you turn it a different direction. So that's just a little helpful hint for future reference. Place that off to the side. Okay, so my next... My work over here go in. Okay. All right, so my next project now is to go ahead and do a hard line over the top. So I've got a permanent marker that I'll use. We do have a permanent marker that comes with your kit as well. So again, we have everything that you need. We go through that whole shopping list from start to finish. The only thing we don't ship is the water, basically. 
We even have party favors now that come with the kit and a little snack. So it's very rewarding and fun. And let's turn it. And you know what? Actually, before I do that, let me get this middle section. I always forget that one. Do a little bit of a space just underneath to give the distance. Now we'll start to work from the other direction, get all of those horizontal lines in place. Always leave, again, just a little space just underneath the ruler because you have to make an allowance for that distance where the pin hits. So you don't want it right on the line or it'll go, the line will go past the line that you draw will go past the line on the canvas, so you want to make a little allowance for that and just go just underneath the ruler. to this side and then we'll flip it to the other side. I'm going to go ahead and switch it to the other side. So now we're going to go ahead and do another outline on top. This just really helps preserve the shapes before we start to paint because the permanent marker does bleed through the paint just a tad, especially when we're doing our background with that overpaint. And we don't want to lose the delicate graphite line, which could be easily covered up.
these are little soft roses here. I'm not going to do the swirls on the inside because I really don't want that part to peek through. I do want to preserve the outside shape, but I would actually rather cover up that middle and I'm going to teach you a really fun way to go ahead and create our roses with just paint. And we don't want to have to worry about obscuring dark circular lines going through there. So you can omit some of this trace if you want. If you want like little soft lines in different places. handle peeking through and again more roses up here so I will not do the inside So even this part can be relaxing and therapeutic for you, just a chance to get still and kind of quiet your mind a little bit. Just follow the lines, think about nothing. <laughs> Sometimes thinking about nothing is really wonderful. And this is where our, our little monogram will go. And I do have a traceable for that. I'm going to freehand something today. But we'll have the entire alphabet for you. And so what you would do on that is you would just cut out that little shape. And at the very end of the painting process, you would place that over the top, tape it to the top here, and then do another transfer with your graphite paper. You would just have to make sure that all of your paint was completely dry. So, and you could do a monogram, it's, that's the other thing, there's options. You could do a monogram or you could actually write, not a whole lot of words, but in here I would say joy would be a good word, potentially, as something you could write to. All right, so wonderful, wonderful. We can go ahead and finish up with this. If you wanted to keep going with this, you could certainly put in your courtly check with, you know, some black in here and just kind of alternate each one. I'm going to go ahead and wait and just paint that. I'll be a little bit faster with this live painting class. I've got plates nearby with paint. I've got a paint kit that is open. Okay, let's 
So, bucket of water. Let's get a visual on that. Let's move some things we're not using out of the way. All right, so we're going to do a soft color over the top of this. And again, this will all bleed through, so I have some titanium white here nearby. And I want a nice little cream color, so that almost has like a little bit of a gray hue to it. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up a little bit of this Mars Black. Let's do a little pea size amount there. We want a, a warm look happen underneath, so let's grab some cadmium yellow. Just a little pea size there, and then let's also grab some primary yellow. All right, let's do a big dollop of the white. Tiny little touch of the black. Make some gray. Very, very light gray. And let's pick up a little bit of that yellow and the cadmium yellow. We're going to work that in. Very tiny amounts of that. So that definitely warmed it up a little bit. Gave more of like a khaki tone to it. So again, this is more of just a wash over the top, so I'm going to touch into, let's pull this closer so you can see, just a tiny touch of the water. I'll go ahead and push that into the paint. And then I'm going to go ahead and just do like little cross strokes back and forth. This is also the same color that I actually want to have running through the courtly check, so I'm going to go ahead and just push it back and forth in a horizontal stroke. But it's easier to go ahead and get that down first before we put in that black. And you can see how that permanent marker is just beautifully showing through. We love that. That is our desired effect here. To help make it easier for beginners. And you can use a much bigger brush for this first part since you're just putting it all over the surface area. Our painting kits, this is our biggest brush, so we're just, I'm going to stick with this one just to show you it absolutely can be done with the tools that you have with the kit. I'm going to push in a little bit of white, just kind of push that back and forth. Again, just back and forth. Or if you do want a little bit more of a texture look to it, you can kind of do a little crisscross stroke. Looks like you make little X's just back and forth. That's also another fun little option. located in Guthrie, Oklahoma. Pretty much smack dab right in the middle of Oklahoma and today it is March 1st and we are having really nice warm weather. It is going to be 76 degrees today. So we're really excited because we've had some extreme cold weather. You know like 11 degrees 
<laughs> it's been crazy. So we're very excited about a week of warm, beautiful weather. So I'm originally from California and this week reminds me of California weather because every day is going to be in the mid 70s and then at night it drops down into like the 40s that's definitely what it does out in California and a lot of people don't even have AC out in California they just open the windows at night cool everything off run ceiling fans let the breezes flow in Alright, so nice sweeping strokes all the way across. And you notice that I keep firm pressure as I keep this going so that it, I don't have choppy strokes through the middle. So again, firm pressure and then all the way across. And then that gets us finished up. Now we have a wonderful base um, to just give really nice coverage. That way you've got color behind the flowers. You don't have to worry about trying to work into a small spot. And you could certainly do a different color behind here too. I know some people prefer like a really light turquoise color. We've got a color mixing guide in the description and then also on our website and in your paint kit. So we provide that for you everywhere. And I'm sure I'll be talking about turquoise here in just a little bit. I'm sure we have some in here. All right, so I'm rinsing out my brush a little bit. Firm, circular motions, a little bit of pressure, and then that helps release the paint, and then you can just kind of check it, and when it goes clear, you do a little scrape on the edge of the bucket there, or your cup, whatever you're using. And then you can use that napkin that we gave you, or I'm gonna use a little rag here, give a quick little wipe. And this is my family of brushes, by the way, that I've got here, so I've got Mama, and then I have Little Buddy, who I'm going to have to give a bath to because I just got paint on him, and then Little Bit. So let's give Little Buddy a bath. That'd be good. And all right, there we go. Okay, so let's see what next. Uh, let's go ahead and do some roses next. And hello again to everybody out there joining us today. We're so happy you're here. Hope you're having a peaceful day, staying warm. If you have any questions or comments, be sure and leave those uh, below and I'll get back with you right after class. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take my mama brush again and all clean and dry, we're gonna mix up some pretty colors for those roses. So we have a lot of white nearby here. I am going to pick up some cadmium red A little pea sized amount of that. So a little primary magenta. Pea sized amount of that. And let's grab some cadmium orange. Alright, beautiful. I'm gonna grab a little bit more white. Push this into the red. And ideally you would like this to be, I think, a little bit more dry. Uh, for the sake of time and teaching today, I'm just going to use a light hand and just kind of take this over the top. So this is that cadmium red and the white. Kind of wiggle the brush a little bit and get full coverage into that little rose shape and you want to try to hold the brush more over to the side so it gives you a gentle hand allows a lot more of that paint to just really rest on the surface area there Let's do a little scrape Excess off. We're going to go back into that white. We're going to push into that primary magenta. Gets a little bit more of that pink happening. And 
and that's our foundation. So they kind of look like little lumpy circles to begin with. Let's grab a little touch of the orange that will give it more of like a coral look. All right, beautiful. So we've got our roses down first. I'm going to go ahead and scrape off that excess there. I'm going to rinse out. Now we're going to go ahead and use our little bit brush. Make sure to get that mic closer. Okay, so we've got a little bit brush now and we're going to pick up a little bit of white. All right, so here's our white on the end of our little bit brush. And then we're going to lay down what looks like little half circles with a light drag, a little bit of a wiggle. Again, little half circles. We'll take this all the way around and continuing that same shape in towards the center. And we'll do that on all of these roses. Continue it all the way around. All right, very pretty. We can also come back in with a little bit of a contrasting darker color, so I'm going to go ahead and rinse out dry off a bit. Let's go ahead and grab that contrasting color. So I'm going to come in with my darkest pink here. A little bit of a touch of that on the end. Just do a little bit of a comma and then lift off with a light hand. I'm going to do the cadmium red. A little comma. Lift off with a light hand. That's that cadmium red again. We'll do just a few little subtle lines of that curved, almost like a little shadow that comes behind the petal. Let's come back in with that primary magenta, little wiggle, little half circle. Now primary magenta, again that little comma right in the center, lift off with a light hand. And let's go back in with cadmium red, little comma. All right, very pretty. So there are our roses. All right, so now we can do a few little flowers, too. Um, and let's see if we have any that are in the same color world. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of this cadmium red here. Still using my little bit brush, and we're just going to push in that color. Try to get a nice little dollop on the end of the brush and just kind of do a little push right on the surface. And we're going to push that into each one of those little petals. Okay, um, we 
switching colors here. Let's switch to a violet. So we're going to switch. I'm going to rinse out my little bit brush. Let's go ahead and work over here to this violet. Little pea size, let's go over there, a little pea size amount. It almost looks black, but it is this violet color. It's going to start to pop a lot when we put in a little bit of white with that. So let's grab some white, push that into the violet, and there it goes. So we've got a little push, and we're going to push that into that shape. And I might even have a little bit of that darker violet still kind of showing as a residual line right on the edge. And I just kind of let that stay into that shape, come back in with a little bit of white, push that in. There's that beautiful lavender. And I'm going to push down a few more little flowers here with that. And the push on this, it kind of feels like you make a little parentheses and another little parentheses and just connect that whenever you're done. Gonna add a few little pieces of this violet that will just kind of peekaboo from around those little shapes. Really beautiful. Let's go and rinse out. All right, let's go ahead and go in with some green now. So let's use some cadmium green. Little pea sized amount of that. Bright yellow green. I like to use everything that the kit has to offer. For just lots of variety and kind of play with it and dip into each and then also the viridian lovely and you know what this is not in my model but i'm gonna switch gears to this this is some primary cyan blue let's do a little pea size amount of that that will allow us to have a little touch of turquoise as an accent with our leaves which I think is quite lovely alright so the first thing we want to do is mix up a little bit of a sage color so I'm going to grab some of this bright yellow green put it over here to the side let's grab some white and then a tiny touch Honey, it's probably a little much of the black. So we'll mix all that together. And that gives us more of a sage color. So again, that's a little touch of the black, a lot of white, and a lot of this bright yellow green. So we've got that mixed up, and I'm also going to kind of play back and forth here with the bright yellow green and that sage. And if you've got brush strokes, again, kind of try to hold your brush a little bit more over to the side, gives you a light, gentle hand. Allows a lot more of that paint to just kind of rest right on the surface and kind of feather those brush strokes out, smooth it out. Now we can add a lot more white to this too. Adding that to that sage and we'll pull that up to this little section in here. little greenery, little pieces of greenery up at the top. Let's go a little bit darker for this section.
just for fun, let's go ahead and push into this viridian. Just add a little bit of intensity down here at the base. Do a bit more viridian. We're going to push into this little shape here and then just kind of pull that back to the center. Do little pushes of our viridian. It's looking really pretty. And I thought I was going to mess up a little bit of turquoise. Let's go ahead and do a little touch of our primary cyan blue, a little touch of our viridian, and then some white. And that gives us a really pretty turquoise color. Just kind of push into little leaf shapes, which kind of feels like making like a little parentheses, a little bit of pressure, and then pull. All right, let's go ahead and rinse out. I've got some brighter yellow. So this is our primary yellow and our cadmium yellow. Go and do a little push of those with maybe just a little touch of that pink in there too. Add just a little bit of brightness to it. Quite lovely. All right, we're going to have to start working in some of this gray here too into our pitcher. So I've rinsed out my little bit. We're going to go ahead and pull in little buddy now. And let's go ahead and pick up some white and then just a little bit of that black, make some of that gray. Also working in some of this golden tone to that, just a little bit here and there for almost like the look of a little bit of distressed, old weathered metal, a little bit of rust happening. And we can pull in a little bit more of the black just to kind of darken it up and have it be a bit darker in spots. Let's do a little line here. I darkened this up a little bit with my charcoal and I'm using the line edge of Little Buddy to go ahead and come around the shape. And we'll use the line edge as much as we can 
some point we're going to have to go back to a little bit to have a bit more precision, but as much as we can in those long strokes, we'll use it. A little bit more black. It's a little bit darker on this side. All right, so now we've got a lot of small curves happening. So we'll have to switch over to that with the line. I'm going to rinse out and go back to a lighter gray here. We'll work into the larger areas. Feather this hat a little bit. So just getting in the larger sections. And there's not much left. And I'm going to have to go back to a little bit because it's all becoming very tiny. Yeah, we're going to have to move down the tiny little bit. All right, let's rinse out little buddy. Dry off. Okay. So let's grab a little bit more of that white, that light gray. And you can kind of just crisscross back and forth in here. We're going to have to just do a little bit of cut in on these little flowers. And if you do happen to go over the flower, it's really easy to take the flower back out over the top as well. Grab a little bit more of this dark charcoal color. Do a little spin into the paint. Let's grab a little bit of water and get more of that black. I'm going to go ahead and make this little line right here.
and taking a little bit more of that dark charcoal color and just doing a little outline now. Just grab a little bit of water, help blend it a little bit and make the paint more fluid. And a little bit of white, kind of pull that into the middle. And do a little curve. touch of this yellow here too, just right in the middle. That's that old metal look. And same thing here, add a little bit of that. Kind of crisscross it out back and forth, softly blending it in. Grab a little bit of water, that dark charcoal, and that'll help make a more fluid, smooth line. lighter white in the middle. Grab more just pure white. My gray is still on there, so I'm going to have a little mix of both and put that right here in the center. Add a charcoal.
getting a little bit more of the darker charcoal now and reinforcing some little lines of the hardware that comes across the picture. is a little full with paint so I'm going to do a little twist, grab a little more of that darker charcoal, again a little bit of twist, a little bit of water, make it very fluid, and nice fine point, and then we're going to go back over this thin line here. pretty and let's see I'm just gonna freehand on the letter A here This little handle up here. Very nice. Now I'm going to come back in and do a little bit of overpainting with my floral to make sure that I'm definitely out in front because I may have had a little bit of my gray coming over the top. So mixing back up that little bit of turquoise. Go back into the sage a little bit. Just make sure that my flowers are also out in front. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of this cadmium red and primary magenta. Just make sure that 
Do a light little wash with water there. I'll put those back out in front too. Do a little drag of white in a few spaces here. All right, really pretty. All right, let's go ahead and go back to our butterfly. So I've got my little bit brush all clean. Let's grab some of that violet and a little bit of the white. Mix that up. Our body will just be black. So rinse out, dry off. Let's go ahead and touch into that just pure Mars black. Kind of twist it out a little bit to get a nice fine point. Take that black now we're going to go around the outside a little bit. It's out. Dry off, let's do a nice spin into that black. Make sure the point of the brush is very tiny. And then we'll do like little tiny lines out into the wings. Kind of make those veer off, like almost like a Y. Lovely, let's do our little white dots. This is a trick that you can do with the handle. All right, so you can just push into the white like that on the end and just tap right down. OK, 
Okay, so this is beautiful, and of course the painting, if you want, it's optional, but you can not do courtly check, and you can just leave it at, you know, at this place, and it's going to be beautiful on its own, just like that. We're going to talk about this courtly check a little bit now. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse out. I got that dried off, and then we're going to switch over to the Mama brush. And also, if you have a shaky hand and you're concerned about this next step, the other thing you can do is take your permanent marker, which I think we'll go ahead and do a little bit of this, just because we are all completely dry, and it sure does help to have this framework back in place right over the top. So I'm going to use my ruler again and my permanent marker, and we're going to go ahead and line out. Oops, I got on that metal part. Hold it really steady. And I've got a little bit of, well, actually it might, it's probably dry right where I need it to be. But you do want to be really careful about dry paint. You never want it to hit your permanent marker or it will dry up your permanent marker instantly. So I'm still being really careful with that. And then let's go ahead and make sure the ruler does not go into the wet paint or the design. We'll reline this. And this is actually something you can do completely with just a permanent marker all the way like through and through but I'm going to teach you to go ahead and paint in the little square sections because it is nice to have more of a painterly look to it. And the other thing you can do too is you can start with permanent marker, marker it all in, that'll give you a lot of confidence and then you can just do a little bit of a touch of black paint over the top. That's really probably my best recommendation. Alright, so we've got that lined out again. Now let's go ahead and flip it to the other side. Good deal. Okay, let's go ahead and do this line. And just keep moving up. And watch your ruler to make sure it doesn't go into any of the sections that are still wet and delicate. That looks awesome. Let's get it going back the other direction. Okay, so as I mentioned before, some of the prep work that you could do, if you wanted to, is that you could go ahead and work in you know, your permanent marker like this and fill that in. 
I encourage you to do this, especially if you have a shaky hand, and then you can work back over the top with the painterly technique that we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and give this a rest, and we're going to pick up Little Buddy and turn my paint back this direction, and then we're going to go right in with Mars Black and just go ahead and paint into these sections here. And we'll just alternate. But this brush works nicely in this shape. And the work that we did in advance with our permanent marker helps tremendously. Just really provides that nice framework. Just take this all the way across. So cute. Let's flip over to the other side. Finish out here.
that's beautiful. All right, good job, everybody. This is fantastic. Okay, so last step would be to sign your masterpiece, which you can do right through here if you want. Um, I am going to wait and do mine later. I want to photograph mine for marketing purposes. <laughs> and so, and then I'll put my signature on later. But yes, that looks really awesome. Okay, so everything that you need uh, for this painting kit is on our website at tipsyartist.com. And we do have the traceable, so again, it makes it very fun and easy. Let me give you a visual on that again, in case you're just now seeing us. So you do not know how to draw. It's all good. We've got all that for you. And we've got the whole alphabet to help you with that, too. All right. And we're going to be doing this in our studio also um, this Saturday, March 5th. Saturday at 6 p.m. We'd love to have you. And again, those class registrations are also on our website, tipsyartist.com. Yay! All right, so we're so thankful for y'all joining us here today, and I think it's time that we get out and enjoy this beautiful day. I think it's getting uh, close to being mid-70s around here, so we're going to get out and get some sunshine, enjoy some, seeing some of the beginnings of some of these flowers coming back into our life. But yes, have a beautiful day, and we'll see you probably tomorrow. I'm going to be painting online a lot this week. So yes, see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Love y'all.